Now, the British Prime Minister has apologised for mistakes her government made in announcing economic measures which spooked the markets. In an interview with the BBC last night, Liz Truss said she recognised the mistakes she and her cabinet made in last month's mini-budget, but insisted the mistakes had now been fixed. Yesterday saw another dramatic series of U-turns in British politics after the new Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, tore up practically all of the measures that had been announced less than a month ago. What I'm focused on is delivering for the British public. Now, I recognise we have made mistakes. I'm sorry uh, for those mistakes, but I've fixed the mistakes. I've appointed a new Chancellor. Uh, we have restored economic stability and fiscal discipline. And what I now want to do is go on and deliver for the public. We were elected on the 2019 manifesto. I'm determined to deliver on that. I'm joined now by our economics correspondent, Paul Coggan. We heard Liz Truss saying she fixed the mistakes. Uh, there's still a black hole in the British finances. Yeah, the problem for the rest of the world and the markets as well is who exactly is running Britain right now? And it would not seem to be Liz Truss, despite what she says. They averted meltdown by bringing in a new man, Jeremy Hunt, the new chancellor, to basically tear up her entire economic vision, her entire economic plan, what they'd been calling trustnomics and to put it in the bin. So that has averted an imminent meltdown, but it hasn't fixed the problem. So the question is now being asked, what's next? What does this British government represent? What does it stand for if the Prime Minister's economic plan has been discarded so comprehensively? And that uncertainty continues, and you can see it in the borrowing costs on the market. It's still over 4% for the British government to borrow for 10 years. That's still very high, and if you had told the British government that would be the case a few months ago, they would have been shocked by that, but that still is the case. We have prominent business people like the co-owner of Chelsea Football Club, a club beloved by so many Tory MPs, saying he believes Britain is uninvestable at the minute and saying sovereign wealth funds have put it on hold. So that's a sign that things still haven't been resolved as far as the British government is concerned. And as the Taoiseach said recently, it's not good from an Irish point of view to have this continued uncertainty within Britain. So the pressure mounts on this trust and it seems it's only a question of how long she lasts. All right, Paul, thank you very much for that.